climate change is affecting uh, the Earth's temperature, and it also affects the ocean temperatures. Now, the ocean can absorb some heat, but this, it's still going to warm up. And so, um, as the ocean warms, it affects, it's going to affect fish. Um, a good example is that, of that is their reproduction. Fish, fish spawning, when they lay their eggs, that's timed really uh, to water temperature, very closely timed to water temperature. So if the ocean, if, say in the spring, for a spring spawning fish, if the ocean is warming up faster and those temperatures are reached too early in the year, there may not be enough daylight. The days may still be too short to increase plankton productivity. So the, the eggs may be spawned at the right temperature, but at the wrong level of productivity because it's too early in the spring. And so that will reduce the ability of the, the larval fish to feed and to survive. So it can, um, the temperature alone can affect reproduction. A lot of the fish in the southeast and off the coast of South Carolina um, move offshore and spawn at the edge of the Gulf Stream. And climate change, we know, can affect the position of the Gulf Stream. The Gulf Stream is a very important current for transporting the larvae uh, back in shore to their uh, juvenile habitat. And if the Gulf Stream is displaced, um, those eggs and larvae, instead of being carried inshore to the juvenile habitat, would be carried off north of Cape Hatteras and be lost to the system. So climate change can affect reproduction in those two ways. And then for some species like um, grouper and other species that spawn out there at the edge of the Gulf Stream, they ride the currents inshore and spend the first few months of their lives in the estuary like Charleston Harbor and they settle into oyster reef habitats. Uh, climate change, in addition to affecting temperature, is affecting the acidity of the ocean and reducing the growth of things like oysters and clams, which require calcium carbonate to form their shells, and if the uh, water is too acidic, those shells won't form. So by reducing the abundance of oysters, you're reducing the habitat for these juvenile fish after reproduction. So just looking at reproduction um, climate change can affect the spawning, it can affect the early life history stages and, uh, and how much food they have to eat, and then it can affect the habitat where the early life history stages spend their first few months. So it can affect this, it can affect fish in several different ways, not, and not just related to temperature. Well, we know is that, as, um, that fish do have temperature preferences and that if the water's too warm or too cold, they'll just move. And so that we see in the southeast, for example, we see um, uh, many fish moving farther north because the water's, is, their temperature preference is now farther north. So fish that supported important fisheries or still support important fisheries off of South Carolina, things like blue line tilefish, are now supporting fisheries off of Virginia and Delaware and New Jersey. And things like black sea bass that support a fishery off South Carolina are now supporting a fishery in the Gulf of Maine. So the, the fish are moving north uh, to find the, the temperature that they prefer. Well, I, I would think that we would see more tropical species moving in. And so we are, we're on the lookout for that. More tropical species of snapper and grouper, for example, that as, as the species that are um, common now off the coast of South Carolina, like red snapper and scamp grouper, it, as they have a tendency to move north, we would expect that things that are more tropical and Caribbean in origin, um, things like Nassau grouper or black grouper, might be moving into our area. Now, we haven't seen much evidence of that yet. We have, have a tendency to see, we've been, we've been seeing more things moving from the southeast to the mid-Atlantic and to New England then we have seen things moving from the Caribbean into the southeast. Um, so these fish can move to find their, um, the temperature that they prefer, but we still believe that they're, are, they're gonna be vulnerable. You know, there's only so many places they can move, and when they try to move, there's already species there occupying their niche. So they might, they might be able to move, or they might just be vulnerable, and those are big unknowns. We haven't tested vulnerability in a lot of these species. And that's an excellent question, and, and um, some of our really uh, more damaging invasive species are tropical species, things like the lionfish that uh, has been introduced to the southeast and is now 
widespread throughout the southeast is a tropical species from the Pacific. Now as, as water temperatures warm, they're going to be able to expand their range even more into shallower water and into more northern waters. Right now the lionfish off, it lives off South Carolina in deeper water where the water's warm year round. <clears throat> but as coastal waters warm, those lionfish would be able to move farther inshore into coastal waters and, and even, you know, expand their range even greater into the shrimp grounds and even perhaps onto the beaches and the estuaries. The habitats are, you know, the habitats are going to change. So as sea level rises, the uh, intertidal oyster reefs, for example, that are now found at the mouths of estuaries are, are going to move farther inland. And it won't be inland anymore. It'll just be, it'll still be an, an estuary. So um, it's going to take, it, it may take a while for those reefs to reestablish themselves. And so that's going to affect the fish that spend the first few months of their lives in those oyster reefs. So uh, juvenile habitats are going to be affected as well as uh, the offshore habitats where these fish spawn. We collect a lot of fishery statistics. We have very good fishery statistics from commercial fishermen because they're required to report what they catch when they bring it in. Recreational fishermen, we have very good statistics on them too because we can sample them at boat ramps and at marinas and place where recreational fishermen bring their catch in. Subsistence fishermen are a bit more difficult. They fish from a lot of different places. They fish from bridges and shores and piers and private property and places where it's much more difficult for us to get to and to sample. And so we really don't have good data on subsistence fishermen, but we know that they're out there and they catch a lot of fish. Um, because they are fishing from shore, as the shoreline migrates, of course that's going to affect their ability to fish. Um, but the main problem we have with, with assessing what the effect would be on subsistence fishing is that we just don't have data on how many people do that and what they're catching. We need better information on, on that fishery in particular. Well, you know, the structures that humans build on the beach as sea level rises are probably going to be knocked down and the beach is going to migrate to the west. Um, but that's been going on for quite a while and animals adapt to that. Um, new beaches are formed farther west. Maritime forests disappear and are covered by beaches, but maritime forests pop up farther west. And so that's been going on for a long time and the animals have adapted. It could be that the climate change rates that we're seeing now and sea level rise rates that we're seeing now may be too fast for the habitats to reform and for the animals to adapt. I don't think we know yet whether that's true. What we see right now is, that, from my perspective, that it's happening, still happening slow enough to where the habitats can reform someplace else and the animals can adapt. Um, the, the biggest problem they're probably going to face is the remains of condos, you know, on the beach that they'll have to deal with. But again, that would just form additional hard bottom habitat that different kinds of species will, will utilize. You know, if you go to, I can remember going to Folly Beach back in the 80s and seeing, you know, chimneys and um, brick foundations of houses sticking up out of the sand on the beach. There used to be a row of houses out there and there was another road out there. Well, that's all gone, um, but the houses are still on Folly Island and the beach is still there and the, and the animals that use that beach are still there. They've just moved a little farther west. And that's within my lifetime seeing that. Um, I think we'll continue to see that kind of change in adaptation. I don't know if the rates of sea level rise and climate change will get become too fast for the, the habitat shifts and the species shifts to keep up. I, I just don't know that. I don't think anybody does. Well, as, as um, sea level rises and uh, the ocean moves farther west, it's, gonna, it's going to move into the estuary, the existing area estuaries farther. So things that like high salinity water are going to be found farther west, but water is still going to, fresh water is still going to continue to flow from the mountains to the sea. It'll just be displaced farther west.